Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1050, College Algebra for students at Southern Italian University. As usual, will be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. In this uh, video, well, the first video for lecture 44, I want to talk some more about exponential models. In the previous lecture, number 43, we talked a lot about uh, exponential growth and decay. Uh, I want to look at some variations of this. Uh, in this video, I want to talk about what's known as Newton's Law of Cooling. Uh, the idea is the following. Uh, if you were to take a very hot substance, like a hot cup of chocolate or something, and put it in a very cold reservoir, the temperature of the environment would cool down the temperature of our hot object, but it wouldn't, and so it's kind of like a decay model of exponential, uh, exponential is kind of like with the radioactive decay we talked about previously, but it wouldn't decay towards zero, it only would decay towards the temperature of the, of the underlying room, and so... If you think about this, you know, your x and y axis, your temperature starts off like really hot, but then it cools down, but it doesn't, again, doesn't cool down towards zero. You're gonna cool down towards some asymptotic value that potentially could be non-zero. That is, it would be the temperature of the surrounding area. We'll call that T sub S for a moment. And this gives us uh, Newton's law of cooling, uh, which the temperature of our object It'll equal some coefficient a, which we'll talk about what that means in just a second. We're going to get e times negative kt plus ts, which as we try to unravel this right here, ts is going to represent the surrounding temperature. So if we place our hot cup of chocolate, say, in the refrigerator, or we take our hot apple pie and put it on the window seal there, it's going to cool down based upon the surrounding temperature uh, there. Um, when it comes to this exponential function, because you do see e to the negative t there, right? It's going to be exponential decay because of this negative number that's in, that's in place there. As we've seen previously, the, the plus k, or in this case plus ts, a part of this exponential function, gives us the location of the horizontal asymptote. Because this plus s, this plus ts is going to give us some type of vertical shift up or down on the graph. And that will move the asymptote from the x-axis to this location right here. That's why we want to use this. So Newton's law of cooling is basically exponential decay with a horizontal shift, excuse me, a vertical shift to move the horizontal asymptote. So it doesn't cool uh, more than the surrounding environment. It also works with exponential heating that it, you could be rapidly uh, heating towards uh, this environment. So the farther away you are from the surrounding, you're going to grow rapidly, but then it'll cool down as you get close. I should say the rate on which it's heating will change based upon how close you are to that asymptote. All right, so if T of S is our surrounding environment, what this number K here is, K is gonna measure the rate at which this object cools down or heats up. We'll, we'll focus just on cooling problems. Different materials will cool at a different rate, like a, like a hot piece of iron, if we shove it in water, will cool down very differently than if we take a hot ceramic and put it in, in, in a cool water or something like that, or a hot apple pie. So K has a lot to do with the, with the, the substance that is cooling down in general. Um, and then what about this number A right here? This is a coefficient. And this coefficient is going to be the difference between T sub naught, which will be our initial uh, temperature with the surrounding temperature Ts. And we've talked about this in previous videos as well. As we try to take uh, the, uh, the y-intercept, which is going to be T sub naught here, we take the difference between T naught and Ts right here. That gives us this, this stretch value of A, the vertical stretch. Again, we've done this as we try to graph uh, exponential functions previously. So that's how we're going to figure these things out. So A is going to be the difference. Uh, it's kind of like the elbow room we have uh, between the current, the initial temperature and the surrounding temperature. We have the surrounding temperature there, and this K has to do with the rate of cooling of the substance. So imagine we have a cheesecake, and it's taken out of the oven with an ideal internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's placed in a refrigerator, which is 35 degrees Fahrenheit. After 10 minutes, the cheesecake has cooled to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. If we must wait until the temperature is cooled to 70 degrees before we can eat it, how much, how long do we have to wait for that to happen? So we can, we can model the cooling of this cheesecake using uh, Sir Isaac Newton's law of cooling, uh, using the formula right here. So what data do we already have? So we have that the initial temperature, T naught, is equal to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. We have that the surrounding temperature, that is the refrigerator, is kept at a chilled 
35 degrees Fahrenheit. We also have the observation that after 10 minutes, uh, the temperature of the cheesecake lowers to be 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So using this information, we can build our model. So some things we can do. So A is supposed to be the difference of T naught and TS. So we're going to take 135 and subtract from it 35 degrees. So we, in, uh, I'm sorry, we have got a little ahead of myself there. We got 165 take away 30, uh, one, no, 35 degrees. There we go. That's going to give us the 130 is as our A value right there. So our model will look something like the uh, temperature T is going to equal A, which is 130 times E to the negative KT plus 35. So we don't know what K is yet. That's what we have to solve for in this situation. That's where the observation of what happened at 10 minutes is significant for us. We can solve for it by like, okay, the temperature was 150 10 minutes later. We have 130E to the negative K. The time was 10 minutes uh, plus 35. So what we want to do is we want to solve for K in this situation here. So what, we can, what can we do? We can subtract 35 degrees from both sides of the equation. On the left-hand side, you're going to get 150 take away 35, which is 115 degrees. We're going to get 130 equals, or 130 times e to the negative 10k right here. So divide both sides by 130. Oh, whoops, 130. So those cancel out right there. Uh, that then gives us that e to the negative 10k is equal to uh, well, 115 over 130, which we can simplify the fraction. This becomes 23 over 26. I'm hesitating to use decimals because I don't want to get a rounding error. So I'm, I want to keep things fractions. You don't have to reduce the fraction if you don't want to. Now, to get rid of the natural exponential on the left-hand side, we need to take the natural log of both sides so that these cancel. That would then give us negative 10k is equal to the natural log of 23 over 26. I mean, you could expand that. Uh, if you wanted to, to be the natural log of 23 minus the natural log of 26, but you can keep it as fraction as well. It doesn't make much of a difference. Uh, and now to continue, divide both sides by negative 10. And so we end up with our K value. K is equal to, well, again, we have the natural log of 23 minus the natural log of 26 over negative 10 for which we're going to try to estimate this thing, right? We want to we do want to have a lot of decimals so that we get accuracy here. I mean, we could pay attention to significant digits if you wanted to, but I'm not going to worry about that in this mathematics lecture. Uh, we get the decimal 0 0.0123. It would be lovely if the next digit was a 4. Uh, but anyways, we'll, we'll, take, we'll just round to four decimal places. So our k value is going to be 0.0123. So now coming back to our model from before, right, we see that t equals 130 times e to the negative 0 0.0123 t plus 35. Notice that because we used our t value as 10 minutes earlier, our rate is actually looking, it, it's be measured per minute. So we want to measure these things in, in the future by minutes. We can always convert to hours and days if we had to, uh, but be aware our t value, the way that we found for k here, this is going to force t to be in minutes right here. All right, so what was the question again? When, when will the temperature reach 70 degrees? So that's what we want to figure out. Uh, so now what we're tasked to do is we need to solve. So we need to solve for T in the equation. Well, when the temperature is 70 degrees, and then using our model here, so we just plugged in 70 in for capital T. So you have E, our 130 times E to negative 0.0123. And then we're going to times that by t, which we don't know t is yet, plus 35. So what we're going to do is we're going to start solving for t, very much how we did over here, right? Logarithms are going to come into play. Uh, so what can we do? We can subtract 35 from both sides. Again, you're going to see that the arithmetic is, is essentially the same here. Some of the numbers are different, but again, the process will be the exact same way. So we get 35, which is 70 take away 35, uh, is equal to 130. Times e to I'm just gonna write I'm just gonna write negative kt for the moment if that's okay so I don't have to write the number over and over and over again uh, divide both sides by 130 
Like so, if you want to reduce the fraction, you can. It's not super critical that you do so, especially since we're going to throw this in a calculator in just a second. But, you know, 35 divided by 130, there is a common factor of 5. You could simplify it to be 7 over 26 if you so choose. Uh, take the natural log of both sides. We're going to get negative kt is equal to the natural log of 7 over 26. Or if you prefer, you could write that as the natural log of 7 minus the natural log of 26. In which case, now we have to divide both sides by k. And so we end up with t is going to equal, again, the natural log of 7 minus the natural log of 26. This will sit above k, which honestly k was this value from before, right? So you're going to get a negative 10 times that divided by the natural log of 23 minus the natural log of 26, which although there's two subtractions of 26 there, that's not going to do you a whole lot of good. Just leave it alone. Um, you, you, you can't just cancel the 26, the natural log 26 across both sides of the equations. They're not, they're not divisors there. So I meant to say across the fraction bar there. Uh, but anyways, you throw this number into your function, or you could just, you could also, you know, have done just the natural log of 7 over 26 divided by your k value from before, the negative k. That was appropriate as well, whatever. But when we put this in our calculator, we're going to end up with, you know, rounding to the nearest minute, we're going to get 100 in seven minutes, which when you have that time frame, you usually probably want to insert hours into there, 60 minutes in an hour, right? So this would be one hour, uh, one hour and 47 minutes. Now, one has to be careful about this moment here in time, right? So we're taking one, we're taking 107 minutes from when we first placed the temperature, uh, we placed the cheesecake inside of the refrigerator. But remember, after 10 minutes, we measured it it's temperature like, oh, it's, it was, what was it, 135 or something like that? Uh, yeah, no, excuse me, 150 as it cooled down to after 10 minutes. So really, we should probably slash 10 minutes off of this time right here and be like, oh, 97 minutes and an hour and 37 minutes, you know, from now. That, that's really how we should view this. So we have to make sure we understand what was the initial point of time so that as we're using this model, we know that from this moment forward, how much time does it take? So after you did the 10 minute measurement of temperature, we need to wait another 97 minutes. Uh, so go watch a, you know, a very short movie and come back and get your cheesecake in a little bit.